Hey guys. So, um, I'm gonna do a new series of videos about civil rights martyrs. And when I was in college, like it was so long ago, I was literally just there. Um, but last year is when I did this. I did a capstone on civil rights martyrs. Well, I graduated last year too. So that makes it sound like it was, whatever. I did a capstone on civil rights martyrs. Um, a capstone is like a very, a very large assignment you do based around your major. Um, my major is history, so I chose to do martyrs. And so you do a lot of research and I obviously couldn't go through everyone that's recognized as a martyr in the civil rights movement because it would take forever. Um, so I picked out a few. And so I plan to make videos for the ones I kind of skipped over. But for right now, I'm just, I'm kind of going down my capstone. And the first person on that list is uh, Reverend George Lee from Belzoni, Mississippi. But before I get into that, I kind of want to break down what I mean when I say martyr. So, excuse me one second. So what do I mean when I say a martyr? So martyrdom is complicated. There is a definition in the Webster Dictionary that defines it as someone who is, who sacrifices their life for their livelihood or something important for the cause that they want to promote or, you know, carry on. Um, but it also, the other definition says someone that endures pain and struggle and strife or, you know, violence. Um, because of who they are or the causes they have. And the difference between those two would be like, like when I say someone who sacrifices the things they have, it's like someone literally saying, I am going to die for this, or I am going to um, sacrifice my job for this. And, um, and that, you know, the intention is there, there are people who do things with the intention to die for a cause. Like people who, you know, uh, sit in the middle of a square, a city square and set themselves on fire. That would be martyrdom. Um, but the other definition is about people who endure because of this. So like Cesar Chavez. Is that right? Okay, Cesar Chavez doing a hunger strike will be enduring pain um, for a cause and also some of the other martyrs that we'll talk about. But, all right, so those are like the, there's a line between them, but they both count. But I'll tell you what the Southern Poverty Law Center defines martyrs as. So the Southern Poverty Law Center includes activists targeted and assassinated specifically because of their activism. So like Martin Luther King or... Um, random victims killed for the purpose of disturbing a movement. So, like, well, Emmett Till, I guess, wasn't for a movement, but it, um, I guess someone more, like, Chester White. We'll talk about him. Ben Chester White, I believe is his name, and we'll talk about him later. But that was to disturb a movement. It was senseless. Um, they're all senseless, but, yeah, for disturbing a movement. Um and other deaths that bring attention to the struggle. So that would be like Emmett Till, um, The Four Little Girls, etc. So I agree. So in this case, when I talk about martyrs, I'm not saying that these people, in a sense, gave their lives away to be taken. I'm saying that they had their lives taken from them because of who they were, because of what they did, because of what they believed, because of, you know, those kind of things. And, um... Uh, we're going to be talking about the people that I discussed in my paper. And then I'll go back and do people that I didn't get to discuss in my paper because I want to do as many as possible. Because the reason I want to do it is so that people remember them, talk about them, know about them. Because they're important, you know? I want, I just want you to say their names. And, um, and uh, there's one person in my paper who is not, traditionally recognized as a martyr but i think she i think there's a case to be made for her especially if we look at it with new eyes but um we'll get to that we'll get to that um so the first person that we're going to start with is reverend george lee 
Now, Reverend George Lee is the first martyr mentioned on the SPLC chronology, and his murder was in 1955. Um, Lee was a member of the NAACP and an operator of a printing press and a reverend of a church in Belzoni, Miss Belzoni Mississippi. So he was a very prominent figure in his town, you know. I mean, he's a preacher, he has the press, the, I mean, the printing press, he's in the NAACP, he is, you know, why did I say everything I just said again? But he's someone that, you know, obviously has a presence. You were in all those groups, you were doing all of those things, you obviously, you know, you the people know you. The people in your town know you. And um, maybe in some cases look up to you. So Lee wanted to be the first black person in Humphrey uh, County, which is where Belzoni is, Humphrey County, to vote. He wanted to be the first black person in Humphrey County to vote. And uh, no African, okay. No African American in Humphrey had registered to vote since Reconstruction, despite the fact that African Americans made up most of the population, which is honestly, the truth in many of these voting story cases is it's where like was it Lowndes County is predominantly black Selma uh predominantly black and yet they have the least that they had the least amount of black voters because of um you know intimidation which sidebar something I probably should mention and I'll probably mention it often throughout some of these cases is that during Reconstruction, the amendment to for Black people to be able to vote was passed. So, until 1930, um, Black men already had the right to vote because after 19... Is it 1929 or 1930? Well, by 1930, Black women also had the right to vote because, see, you know, women didn't get the right to vote until the suffrage, suffrage movement. Um, so, but the point is... Post-1930, everybody, I mean, well, no. Okay, all black people had the right to vote in this country. Um, and they were voting in different states. Uh, but in the South, the intimidation was very strong. So the voting rights um, movement was not for the right to vote. It was for the right to vote to be protected. So sometimes people say, you know, couldn't even vote till 1965. And it's not completely true. It's just if no one's letting you exercise your rights, then you might as well not have them. But okay. Anyway, so um, when Lee went to pay his poll tax, he was turned away and he filed a formal complaint, which I'm sure probably shocked them anyway, because usually they're probably used to just... Sorry, I almost knocked my water over. But he's just sending people on their way and ho-hum, you know. But uh, he submitted a formal complaint and after that he was allowed to submit his ballot. Um, but after successfully registering his information, he was of course, um, his information was of course printed and displayed in the paper. So that was the deal, right? First, you have to, you know, you got to pay your poll tax. You have to take a, you might have to take a literacy test. You have to, uh, you might have to find somebody that'll sponsor you to be a little voter. Then you have to register and you, they have to take your registration. And once you finally get to register, because he, you know, he complained and they're like, fine, we'll let you register. Excuse me. Then they put you in the papers. And that is another form of intimidation so that all the white businessmen will know who you are and then they can hurt you, they can, you know, get you fired, they can, you know, whatever they want to do, that's why they put you in the paper. So it, that's supposed to discourage you from going any further because, you know. So anyway, they put him in the paper and the White Citizens Council became aware of his involvement and they wanted to stop him. Now the White Citizens Council is kind of like the KKK in suits. Like, they they turn their noses up at the KKK because they're rowdy boys. Um, you know, they want to do, they, they like to do their things in a more professional manner. They, they're still terrible. Uh, 
and they're obviously and they're definitely not above violence but you know instead of just going out and picking you up and you know they tried to hit you in different ways so like being businessmen um if you worked for white employers they could you know of course get you fired um they could find a way to you know they, they like to hit the pockets of the movement um so the white citizens council is you know what i might as well keep it as what i said before it's the clan in suits so they became aware of it and they offered him protection so they're like you know they're thugs they're 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 you know we'll protect you if you just do what we want you to do and stop trying to vote and okay maybe you vote but you can't you can't do all this work for voting rights because remember he is a important person in his community as a preacher as a business owner with the printing press you know and he's not only trying to vote for himself but he wants the people around him to get into this so they're just like look if you just shut up um we'll let you do it and of course he wasn't going for it because you know that just wasn't something he believed in he would he didn't believe in that and he wanted people to thrive he wanted people to to vote he wanted people to you know exercise their rights as americans so he said no he he didn't want that help well um after he refused on the night of may 7th 1955 Lee was shot as he was driving home. He was shot in the face. Um, and, you know, um, the newspapers, they said that his death was an accident, a car accident. Like, they didn't even, it was just a car accident. And when people were like, but he had lead in his face, you know, lead found in his mouth from being shot, well, they wrote it off as well. We're pretty sure those are just dental fillings. Those are just, you know, that, that that's it's just his teeth, you know. That's, that's what that is. Which is wild. There's actually a really good little documentary that is on YouTube that I will put um, in the description as a link because it was one of my sources. Um, because you guys should watch that. By the way, my source, I will... Um, try to put different sources here i kind of don't have all of them at hand because i wrote the paper a long time ago but anything i have is like public domain i don't have any like juice you know like i have things that you guys can find too i just you know put it together um but yeah there's a good documentary because they talk about like you know how bogus that was like they're like there's he was shot like there was lead in his mouth and they're like oh it's just his teeth feelings and then what makes it like uh, apparently a white, like where the accident, not an accident, where the murder happened, a white man had actually come out of his house. A witness said like he saw a white man come out and the cops were like, you know, doing their thing. And he was like, Hey, I actually saw the truck that, you know, that I'm pretty sure shot at this guy. I remember what the truck looked like. And they basically told him to go back into his house and shut up, like go, go away. And, and then he let, he had to leave town. Um, I think the lady, I do believe the lady said he had to leave town after that because that wasn't something they wanted to investigate. They weren't going to investigate it. So any, any noise like that is unwanted. So, so no one was ever charged with his murder. It was ruled an accident. Um, the case was reopened as a part of the Emmett Till bill. But as of right now, I'm unsure as to whether or not the case is still open because many unsolved uh cases like this were reopened with that bill however many of them closed soon after because there was just not enough evidence that they could use anymore the people involved were all or mostly dead so george lee's case reverend george lee's case i do believe remains unsolved and that's the end of his case that is the story of reverend george lee and next time we will bring you another murderer. I believe the next one will be the story of Willie Edwards Jr. Thank you all for watching and remember to stand up for what you believe in, stand up for what's right, make good trouble, and make good choices. All right guys, see you later. Bye.